Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rewind part of the Wayward World podcast. I'm Sid, and joining me today is a lovely actor and a brand new best friend to the show, <laughs> um, friend of Annalise Veldman. Uh, please welcome Christian Taylor. Christian, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Look, uh, I have a story to tell you here. So okay. um, getting set up for the show and everything, like mm-hmm. I decided, like my good friend Art Diaz, he gave me uh, some candles. I was like, I'm going to light up a candle in here, you know, just to, because like it's all foresty stuff, like uh, get forest. the Get the mood going. Well, yeah, there's that. And uh, I light up the candle and I go up the stairs. And I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, the classic and most popular Disney movie nowadays, like Encanto. I just like, <laughs> oh, man, I was just like, I, I got to make sure this candle doesn't go out. Otherwise, the miracles. I, <laughs> that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, oh, Casita, she's falling apart. That's hilarious. I've, I've seen that movie. I mean, so many times. Yeah. Now. Inca- yeah. Like I... I, I've seen it so many times against my will on TikTok. <laughs> I I was surprised at how much I liked it. Like I knew I was going to like it, but after watching it for the first time, I was like, this is, this is really good. It was really good. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I definitely agree. Um, I do really like it despite seeing it so many times on TikTok. Like, you know, the generational trauma, I, I absolutely am. I'm, I'm Arab. <laughs> so like, I absolutely uh, agree with with like <laughs> I, I, it hit on a different level for me let's just say that yeah yeah christian how are you doing today i'm good i'm good man just yeah. got off uh got off work a few hours ago um and uh had some mac and cheese nice and uh just kind of relaxed kind of you know unwind a little bit and uh here i am nice well why don't you tell the wayward artists out there who you are what you do and how we met because like we li- this is the first time we've ever talked to each other yeah, for sure. Um, so I work for um, this place. Hey, Disneyland. You may have heard of it. It's a little mom and pop called Disneyland. Yeah. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a performer there. So it's it's really, really a uh, it's a fun gig. It's very tiring, though. I will say that very, very tiring, a very physical job. Um, but it's really fun. It has a lot of rewards to it. Um, and how we met is through a friend of mine, Annalise, that you've already talked about. Annalise went to uh, my college or what, my, my community college. Mm-hmm. And we were in, I think we officially met at Stage Makeup. Mm-hmm. But what's funny is we have so many mutual friends and we both worked for Apple once upon a time. And like all of our Apple coworkers were like, oh, Annalise goes to that school too. Oh, I go to that school too. Why haven't I met her yet? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I finally have a class with her. And like the first time I saw her, I basically was like, so we basically already know each other. We're already best friends. Nice. And, uh, and then she got me in contact with you. Yeah. Okay. So, so like a couple of things there, like, yeah, Annalise told me, like, I don't know if like specifically I, I could really like say on here like what what ex- like, like what exactly led into the conversation of like oh yeah I want to meet Christian other, uh, other than like I've been really wanted to talk to a cast member I really mm-hmm. appreciate everything that you guys do like yeah like as someone who goes to the park now like twice now <laughs> mm-hmm. and I, have a, I have a future trip in like in May going on for mm-hmm. like Star Wars week or whatever they're or, like Star Wars yeah. day cool. um it's always exhausting on the third day for me, like the third or fourth day. And I like my feet are dead. I, I can't take yeah. it. So I just like, I really got to commend you for like, you know, like it is exhausting just to like be a, like just a, an attendant rather than like, I can't even imagine what it's like for like a cast member. You must be like, yeah, your calves must be great. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I have like workout stuff in my apartment and I tell all my friends and family, like as much as I would love to work out, like, I can't because like yeah. my job is literally workout and I would just be dead like just 24 seven. Yeah. If I work out. Yeah. So do you like um, with regards to performing or like not performing, but like, you know, working as a cast member, like mm-hmm. what does that like entail exactly? Cause like you hear that term and you see like a bunch of people everywhere, like working different yeah. things. Like, are you comfortable talking about what you do over there specifically? Yeah, I can I can go into um, like like a few details um, about it. I mean, I apologize, I can't talk, you know, uh, in super super detail about it. But I'm sure that you and your viewers can kind of guess what I do based off of what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Disneyland, uh, Disney in general is a entertainment company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so 
you know, anybody can go on to audition for a bunch of stuff. You can audition to be a musician. You can be a, uh, you can go to audition to be a character performer. You can do a parade. There's so many, so many avenues that you can go to as a performer that you can like challenge yourself with. And um, I saw an audition for a character performer and I went on a whim. Um, they weren't even calling like my, me, like my body type, my height, all that stuff. Cause they are very specific. And uh, I just decided to go. And even though that they could literally tell me to leave as soon as I walk in the door, thankfully they did not. Yeah. Um, and uh, I went and I got hired that same day. Um, and uh, just basically kind of what it entails is um, a lot of improv, a lot of physicality. Um, you have to really make sure that you are healthy and strong enough to not only perform, but wear the costume. Mm -hmm. um, depending upon the costume, they can be heavy, they can be light. Um, and then um, just, uh, what, what word am I trying to say? I mean, you know, when you sign up for you know, performing in general, especially for a performing gig that's like permanent, like Disney, mm -hmm. um, you know, you sign up to sweat, you know, literally every single day that you work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sore sometimes, you know, feet are burning, um, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's like, I think you gave the best description that you can. Yeah. Saying like, you know, which character, <laughs> like which performance or which character you do. But yeah, um, like, I think like, um, do you think like all the like the exhaustion and like the the sweating and everything, like, is it worth it in the end? Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was talking to, um, you know, entertainment is such a big, I mean, it's such a huge like team within Disney, you know, there's, there's an entertainment ops that deals with like the fireworks and the lighting and the sound and all that backstage stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's entertainment costuming that deals with, you know, all the costumes for everything from parades to character performers to, you know, just the regular main street workers to everybody. Um, and one of the customers said to me today, actually, uh, I'm sorry if I'm in your bubble, you know, while they were kind of helped me get dressed and everything. And I'm like, you know, I did theater. I've done theater. I still do theater, um, you know, years and years and years. And I'm just like, so I'm so used to people being in my space, you know, it's just one of the many things that you kind of sign up for. And uh, even the, uh, the casting director, when, when I got hired, she was like, you know, just so you know, like, you know, you're going to sweat a lot and all this and all of that. And I'm like, yep, I know exactly what I'm signing up for. Um, but yeah, if, of course it's, it's worth it. It's, it's more than worth it. Yeah. Especially like when you see like the commitment of like, say, um, like what, like the actual, like, you know, the property characters and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like, like getting to interact with them, uh, on my trip, I actually met, um, uh, T'Challa, um, cool. with, and he was like, like, it was so cool because like, uh, yeah. for the longest time, you know, like the whole Wakanda forever, like, I didn't feel like yeah. I could like claim that, you know, because I'm not black. So it was like very uncomfortable for me to do that. But like, you know, like that's T'Challa over there. I just did the book. He did it and I did it. So it was like, yeah, it was like cool, you know, and it's I just like a, like, a uh, just a worldwide, like peace symbol kind yeah. of, you know, it, like it, it, yeah, exactly. And I, you know, as an Arab, I still haven't met Aladdin yet. You know, I want to talk to that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, cause yeah, Aladdin as a kid was, um, uh, you know, like the only Arab representation I had. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, uh, it would be cool one day, like I, I'm planning next, like next trip to like do more of the character interactions. Mm -hmm. I think like I was telling Annalise on my, on her episode, like the recent one that we did, mm -hmm. I just like, I get so nervous around the character actors because I think like in my brain that they'll think I'm like a fake, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. Like, it's so weird. Like, yeah, like yeah. this is going to come and like the, punch me in the gut for like saying something that wasn't canon or something like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know, it's you know, weird. It's, yeah. Do what's you, so like, funny is it, I, I also get nervous sometimes meeting characters at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, this is crazy why like i am a performer at disney mm -hmm. why why do i get nervous like this is what i do it's just yeah. you know it's, it's it's weird but it's kind of funny 
Yeah. It's because like, they're really good. Like it, it cause it's, it's them, you know, like yeah. that's the, those are those characters. And yeah, you no, know, I got, I got a little beef with Chewbacca, you know, like <laughs> uh, I met, like I saw him last time. He called me a baby face, you know, uh, because of like, <laughs> the no beard. And I was right. Just, yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> <"Man>, <laughs> you, you gotta have hair all over. Yeah, I to, I've, to please Chewbacca. Exactly. You know, like that would uh, probably that would most definitely please him. But Chewbacca has always been my favorite when I went there. Yeah. Um, but Christian, I want to. I'm kind of curious about you. Um, tell me about you. I want to know where you're coming from. You mm-hmm. saying you you mentioned acting, theater. Like, who is Christian Taylor? That's a really good question. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um besides besides actor uh gamer um oh. huge movie lover um that's like all i watch is movies basically um uh performer um theme park lover not just disneyland but just theme park lover in general but mm-hmm. you know disney nerd of course as well so tag that onto it disney nerd yeah <laughs> um uh yeah that's that's basically kind of me in a in a okay. nutshell yeah. yeah you you did mention like you're a twitch streamer too like um yeah me, i forgot to say that yeah. yeah tell me a little bit about that because like you know we had cleve adams from spawn on me on the show jared petty right. from ign we have a couple like uh we, we kind of have a couple of friends in the games space. Yeah. so like tell me what you do like um uh, yeah that's a really good question um i uh have been loving streaming lately um i got a brand new computer just last year um mm-hmm. specifically for i only use it for uh pc games and streaming um and i'm on it right now actually mm-hmm. um and uh mainly i have play um dead by daylight oh i two? i love that game no no, no not not uh, dying light dead by daylight. oh oh okay sorry the dying light 2 just came out yeah that came that out i yeah. want to check out but yeah, I stream uh, mainly Dead by, Dead by Daylight, hashtag Killer Main. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's been, it's been really, really fun. Um, I'm a little sad. I've been like really, really busy lately. So I haven't streamed in like a week, which really sucks because I try and stream three days a week, which wow. I'm usually good at. But this last week, it's been just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's been really, really fun. I've been growing slowly but surely. Um, I've been loving like the community that I've been growing like within my within my Twitch little community, my Twitch channel, um, and you know, speaking of that, me being a Disney nerd, my entire Twitch channel is themed after the Haunted Mansion. Oh, so all of my my scenes, my alerts, my homepage, um, wow, to man. even like half the time I wear Haunted Mansion like stuff, you know, um, everything is like haunted mansion because that is my favorite ride at disneyland oh, man. yeah you know <laughs> like I, me and annalise were talking about like one of our favorite rides and she does not like the haunted mansion so uh i'm glad yeah, we can like vibe yeah, on that yeah, yeah. i rode that um I've, I've only ridden it when uh it was the holiday version because uh for some reason i've i found myself there on like holidays like uh, last year it was october you know halloween but mm-hmm. like i was also 2019 when yeah the world was um a different was, place <laughs> was normal right yeah it was yeah. normal whatever that means <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah i was there on christmas so i wrote it the holiday version of that cool. too. so uh, i'm excited like this year like in may i'll get to ride the actual haunted yeah. mansion. um that's so cool that's so cool that you do that and like you're playing scary games too on there like that's yeah have you played well, i mean you did my daily it's like it's scary but like it's not like you know, like jump scare, or like anything, like it's like, I mean, it, it's, it's technically a horror game for sure. Have you played on Xbox, like the Disneyland game that was like supposed to be for connect, but like they made it into a game. I think I know what you're talking about. I did not. Yeah. Um, so, so Xbox made a game called, it was, it was called Disneyland, basically Disneyland. Uh, it, okay. it utilized a lot of the functions of like the Xbox connect uh, which you know it died an unceremonious uh, unceremonious death because it was an awful device and it was an awful piece of technology. <laughs> um, so they remade that game into like uh, where you can play with a controller because the Kinect doesn't exist anymore. And you know the mini mm. games for that or whatever they they they're kind they kind of suck to be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what's great about the um, the layout or the 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 world map is it is a one to one recreation of disneyland 
like you can walk into the park like it's it's almost perfect one to one like yeah like that's ex- crazy ex- except like galaxy's edge is not there but like this game oh, came right. out before galaxy's edge was a yeah thing. um but yeah you can like <laughs> I, I i watched the podcast where um it was a bunch of like uh people i'd listen to going to disneyland during the pandemic where they played this game and they would go to um, yeah specific rides and they would play that's like so pobs funny. of the like of different rides and just talk about disney um yeah. yeah that game is so dope if you have game pass like with pc yeah you, you if, if you have game pass it should be available yeah I, I i might get it we'll 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 see i'm i have been thinking about it though um have you have you seen the uh the minecraft server the public oh. minecraft server that's also both disneyland and dca yeah well i and haven't it's... heard of the server i've heard um there's some official like minecraft like dlc for magic kingdom disney world uh oh. which which is like oh yeah you could you could do that but um that one specifically i have not heard of but that sounds cool though yeah someone made disneyland and like Ooh. all the rides and like went all out and i think that's absolutely insane but it's a public server that anybody can go on oh fine um and experience minecraft disneyland which is crazy <laughs> dope well before we get into like the main question of the show i do have one question i want to ask you yeah. uh from your perspective um uh, who's Annalise Feldman? Uh, Annalise has been a friend of the show. Oh, put me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> she's so, terrible. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, you know, because like she's a friend of the show, and I know Annalise, and she's a great yeah. person. But like, um, tell me a little bit about you and Annalise and she, what she means to you. She's like, I uh, there's a lot like I can unpack there. Um, I didn't think that. I don't know like I, I didn't when I, when I first met her like I didn't think that she'd be like one of my like homies you know like somebody that I can go to like whenever I want to mm-hmm. and just like just tell her like everything you know tell her what's going on and, and everything and be just so vulnerable to her um but uh she is uh she's just mm-hmm. fantastic um talented funny as shit oh, yeah. um <laughs> um really chill uh easy to get along with um you know we both of us have like so much in common like we just like connect on so many levels um and it's just like kind of mind blog blogging mind boggling <laughs> um on top of that fantastic smile best mm-hmm. smile i'm i'm a i'm i'm a sucker for a good smile and she has a really, really nice smile yeah um but just overall like she's just like i mean i can't say like how amazing she is and how much that she means to me um like words can't even like describe how much she means to me oh um, yeah 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 she's super dope um the other thing i would probably add there is she's a fighter like she's uh, oh yeah, yeah like yeah. she is um she's definitely v- very strong both like, her and her mom mm, yeah are, yeah are fighters yeah sure. exactly yeah but uh, i think i think we talked about her mom's like cancer mm-hmm. treatment but you know yeah. Annalise is very like was very open about that so yeah. um yeah she's always like struck me as someone who is very strong very mm-hmm. yeah funny and you know she's disneyland lover and stuff like that yeah. um we met at actf the Kennedy Center of American oh, cool. Festival. Were cool, you ever cool, cool. were you ever there? Like, did you ever go? No, I wanted to. I only did one show at ARC and it was Pride and Prejudice, and I was part of the ensemble. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never got to be a part of the AC ACTF, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh it it looked like a lot of fun, you know, traveling to other places and performing and stuff like that. I really wanted to be a part of it, but I never yeah. I never got to, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Cause like uh when you mentioned you went to school with her, I was just like yeah. I feel like we had to have ran into each other, but then now you said you haven't. I mean, done it, it was just like that would that would that would have been interesting because if you went to ARC, then I mean, maybe I mean who knows? Oh no, I went to Gonzaga. Oh okay, I mean I I knew that I tested you in the past. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, all right, Christian, I'm excited to talk to you about for someone or something you're thankful for. But before we do that, I want to remind the wayward artists out there that this is the Rewind, part of the Wayward World podcast, where each and every Sunday I sit with a wayward artist as they talk about with, as they talk about something about sorry wow the words, are, <laughs> the words are gone the rigmarole like this is something i say all the time um 
each and every Sunday, I sit with the Wayward Artists as they talk about someone or something they're thankful for or whatever it is I want to talk about. Uh, if you like that, please subscribe, like, comment, share on YouTube. Just look us up, the Wayward World Podcast, because YouTube doesn't think we're worthy of a custom URL until we get 100 subscribers. We are 70 subscribers away from getting that. So please help us get a URL so I don't have to uh, extend this spiel of like, why can't I just say a URL for the YouTube channel? Um, then look us up on audio services everywhere. We're on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anything with a cast at the end, we're there, including Facebook Podcasts. So if you want to go argue with your QAnon grandma on uh, on like her story feed or whatever Facebook calls it, um, go ahead and do that and listen to the show at the very same, at the exact same time. Crazy. Facebook has podcasts and that is like all is wrong with the world. I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even know Facebook had a podcast. Yeah, oh, they do. They do. They do. Um, and then let's see. Oh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash wayward world podcast. We're at the dollar level. You can buy me something off the dollar menu at McDonald's and at the $5 or above level, you can help support the show by getting exclusive perks and goodies, including episodes early, uh, hangouts, uh, newsletters, and possibly being a guest on the show. So go support us on patreon.com slash wayward world podcast. Uh, shout out to Jared Petty from Pockets Full of Soup and Top 100 Games Podcast for being my podcast dad. Now, now uh, Christian, I'm going to ask you the question that I like to, like, that I have to ask guests each and every Sunday, <laughs> each and every <laughs> week. Um, tell me about someone or something you're thankful for. Um, so I was thinking of like different people in my life um, and like, you know, as much as I would love to say my mom, which, you know, of course it is very true. You know, she's been very supportive of, of my entertainment career and, and a whole bunch of other things, of course. Right. Um, there's one person that kind of stands out and um, his name's Will Gote, and he's been kind of my mentor a little bit on getting back within like the entertainment industry itself not just with um disney man but just like acting outside of disney um you know making sure that my website is uh up to date and looking nice uh, make sure making sure my my resume uh is, is professional looking um kind of telling me within like the ins and outs of the industry in general because he is a he's a full-time chef but he's also a working actor um and he's been in several movies He's been in several commercials, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I'm so happy that I can finally have somebody to talk to within the industry um, to just kind of be real with me. Because um, I feel like a lot of times that I talk to somebody, um, they're like either, I mean, I just feel like they're lying to me sometimes. And also I feel like they're like, selling me a not a dream but like selling me a fantasy you know um because how do i explain that like anybody can be an actor anybody can um there's thousands of people that are actors right now that we don't know but are ma they're making a fantastic living and they're living happily as an actor um but, uh, you know, it makes me a little sad when, you know, I see like, you know, this YouTube video or like I talk to somebody in person and they're like, oh, yeah, just go here and you can magically be an actor. That's not how it works. Um, or like, you know, go here and get this job. You know, I see that a lot. Um, and it, it's not it's not that easy. Um, uh, so like, you know, to be an actor, to be just in, in the industry in general. Um, you really have to want it. Yeah, exactly. Like um, going off of like what you were saying about uh, people like selling you on a dream or like, mm -hmm. you know, lying about uh, different career paths and stuff like that. You know, like when you think about like, there's a discord going on online uh, within Twitter and like the mm -hmm. acting and like the rich people community of like, you know, where all these <laughs> people come from and maybe yeah. not all these like celebrities that you see didn't come from like, um, uh, like so a rough start you know mm -hmm. like they, they had parents and their parents were rich <laughs> you yeah know, they, they all come oh, from money man. and wealth and prestige yeah. so it's just like um seeing those posts lately it was kind of very humbling to like look at that and just being reminded like okay maybe there's like an opportunity here for me like yeah. maybe in whatever space that I want to be in um 
I'm, I'm curious about what you said about, um, you know, getting you back into acting. Can you mm. like expound on that a little bit? Like, was there a moment in your life where you weren't doing that anymore or were you like, like where you fell off? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've been acting like off and on now for, um, 10 plus years, like maybe mm. even 15 plus years. Um, a lot. Um, I am just recently starting to kind of not rebrand myself, but like basically just continue to kind of refresh everything, my resume with my website and all that stuff, um, getting my reel together, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you know, life happens. Um, and it's, it's so hard to do what you want, but it's hard because that doesn't make money yet, you know? Um, and uh, you have to, you know, have an actual job for a while until, you know, something takes off, hopefully something takes off. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, this, uh, I mean, just, we'll just, we can just talk about now. Um, I haven't acted in, well, I mean, two years, one for obvious reasons, because of the uh, 99,000 yeah. um, that's out in the world. <laughs> um, it's, it's harder to get jobs right now because of that, um, mm -hmm. which totally makes sense, which is fine. Um, but, uh, that I got like really, really sick in August. Um, I got pneumonia in August. Oh, so that was fine. Don't get pneumonia pro tip. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it, it sucked. It was terrible. Um, it's very painful. A lot of meds. I was off of work for over a month. It was insane. So that kept me from doing that. Um, the recovery process was several months after that. Um, and then, you know, on top of, you know, working as much as I can to, um, you know, live to, so I can, you know, pay rent and food and, and everything. And I'm sure you know this, you know, everything is going up and up and up. Gas is insane and yeah. foods prices are rising and all that stuff. And so, um, so yeah, but I love finding um, inspiration and, you know, talking with Will and um, things like that to kind of just light a fire uh, in my ass, basically, so to speak um to get back in the game you know mm -hmm. keep was creating it, no matter what exactly yeah. yeah um like going off of like your conversations as well like what were some moments where he's definitely like like that you credit him with like your, uh, with your career like maybe a specific moment or a specific thing that he did for you that meant a lot to you mm -hmm. um that's a good question um we talked this is um probably about like six or so months ago. It was during, um, yeah, like just about six months ago. Um, we were, cause I sent him kind of everything. He was like, okay, send me everything you got on acting. I need your resume, I need your website. I need like uh, everything you got. And I'm like, okay. And so I did that and he's like, okay, your resume is good. Um, your uh, website is, it needs a little work. So what he did was this like super meant a lot to me it, it's uh you know i have my resume my head shots and all that stuff on my website um uh but i have this like short little bio kind of about me um and you know who i am as an actor and like what i can do and what i would like would like to do and what i would like to learn and i had it worded um in my opinion well, I'm not like the best writer, but I can, I can write an essay. <laughs> um, yeah. And he like took it and kind of flipped it upside down, but like in a good way. Mm -hmm. And he really helped me out with this about me page. And just by doing that, like small thing uh, meant a lot to me. Cause not only did it help me, my website, it helped me kind of gain gained so much inspiration um to you know finish working on my website finish working on my reel and sending all this stuff to the proper uh people the casting directors to um directors to just anybody um and uh, i mean he doesn't even i haven't even told him this but uh just that one little thing like auditioning for things and just like everything yeah, um, like we talk about mentors a lot on the show and mm -hmm. like, you know, stuff of people like Will and stuff like that, like they're great motivators. Like you go to this person, like you go to like your mentor or someone that mm -hmm. you look up to and like just having somebody that's able to like, 
you know, kind of look into your soul a little bit mm-hmm. or like be honest with you or like, je- like, you know, I, I always think like there's several different kinds of love, like, you know, his love for you and like what you do, like uh, the fact that he took all that time to help you out with your website, you know, like that's super dope, like bios and stuff like that. Like I've worked on bios, like back when I was doing theater and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like, that's no easy feat. So um, like it's, I definitely would have loved to have some help with it. Like the best thing, I think the best kind of advice that I got from my bio was just like how I wrote it. Cause like I write mm-hmm. things, like usually how I write things is like it goes into my brain. Um, like I write everything that's like in my brain. Like that's why I like when I talk like right now, <laughs> I uh, I don't talk well, but like if I if I write everything that's like up here in my brain, I just type it out. And yeah. um, you know, like that's, I, I, I've never really had needed the help with the writing part, but like it is hard mm-hmm. to do like artist statements and stuff like that. And people are like, well, they're so dope. You know, like they they come in and like they inspire you and you see all the work and the love that they have for you and you kind of like put it to you yourself and to your work. Yeah. And it sounds like that's what exactly what you did. Like when you kind of shot yourself in the butt and uh, <laughs> like updated your resume and, you know, put, put yourself out there and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So it sounds like Will's really super dope. How did you meet him? Um, through my girlfriend. Um, uh, her dad is friends with Will Mm-hmm. And she was like, hey, my dad knows this actor. You should talk to him. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I would love to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we got connected on there. And then during, I met him in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and during 2020, I mean, all of us, I mean, I was home doing nothing, just finishing school and playing video games. And uh, he was in this theater group uh, within Zoom of just creating just stuff. Um, you know, poems, uh, you know, short plays, uh, short films, um, just kind of, you know, just to kind of just create just random things, just to kind of like keep our creative minds flowing during the the pandemic, you know, when it was or quarantine, I should say, um, when, I mean, everything was shut down, you know, the industry in general was shut, shut down for, for months. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then I uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, that's um, okay. <laughs> and then um, yeah, I haven't talked to him in a while just because, uh, and I haven't even been on the on the Zoom meeting because they are still meeting um, on Zoom every week, mm-hmm. and uh, it's been hard because you know work, you know, I got called back to Disney, mm-hmm. and um, you know things like that, and I usually work on on the days that they are uh, they're meeting, mm-hmm. um, and so it's been hard to kind of talk to him but uh what we do is still keep in contact which is good nice you yeah. know the way you talk about will like you talk about like i i had assumed that you knew him for like years and years and that like yeah you know, in college or something two years huh like yeah. that's that's crazy like and you have like this deep like connection he must have meant like a lot to you yeah like in the last two years well it's it's i mean it, he's like the only person that i know that uh is willing to talk to me of, you know, about like the in and outs of Mm -hmm. the industry. Um, And, you know, that's like, you know, what I said about, you know, like people like talking to me, like something like a fantasy, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of people for some reason, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of like they want to keep like their journey a secret or something, you know, but like, what's funny is like everybody's journey is so different Mm -hmm. on, you know, how they get a career with that acting like not even just being like you know well known or famous or anything not asking that I mean of course anybody would love to be rich and famous right but uh you know that's not always the the case it's just um you know I mean you could go by word of mouth and get this audition and then you get this role and then that role leads to other roles or you could just get this one job and you know there's so many different you know scenarios and like ways to to do things and, uh, you know, another thing that kind of makes me sad is like, I know a lot of people within the entertainment industry and I feel like every time I talk to somebody, um, they're like hiding something, you know, or like afraid to tell me something. Mm-hmm. Um, and Will doesn't do that, which is like really, really helpful. And that's all any actor, I think, or any entertainer wants is just, you know, I know it's hard, but talk to me straight. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it's kind of crazy that, 
you've had that experience mm-hmm. of like uh, a lot of people like kind of gatekeeping information mm-hmm. and like their experience because like yeah I feel like not to like you know brag about like uh, like my my connections yeah, or no. anything like that no, no I feel like I've been surrounded by people who have been very honest about their journey and like yeah I thought like that was just the general vibe of like people who like want to succeed in like what mm-hmm. they're doing here especially like someone as someone like me like I 100 percent I'm I'm down to talk about like you know, how I went from theater to being a content creator and making this podcast and like making this YouTube channel. Like I'm totally down to talk about like my feelings about that. And, you know, my experience with like, you know, agents and stuff like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Me and my friend and I, uh, like John Reddy, that's um, like, I think, I don't know when his episode's going to come out in comparison to like this episode, but mm-hmm. uh, I spoke to John in one of these like recording sessions that we did. And we talked about like uh, the similar agency that we had here in like Spokane and uh, mm. like our different experiences with them. Uh, me essentially like not getting any roles uh, from that. And it was because mm. like, I, I applied there rather than have them approach me. So I was like, yeah, yeah not that I, I, that's how I felt. I also was a very bad like actor <laughs> and I didn't respond <laughs> to like respond to things and Int- not intentionally, like, well, actually intentionally, like they wanted me to go, like they wanted me to skip work. They wanted me to skip school to like go to an audition in Seattle. And I was like, I don't have time for that. I'm in school, babe. Like <laughs> you can't yeah. do that. Like uh, this is not worth my time and like the money. I, I, I'm poor. Like that's the other thing. I, I don't yeah. drive. I don't have anything. Like how am I supposed to just, oh yeah, a leisure trip to like Portland, Oregon, from Spokane, <laughs> like which is like a, an eight hour drive to and from. And I'm like, are yeah. you crazy? Like, oh yeah, you could like, anyway, I, I digress. I'm, I'm kind of like going over, but like, you know, um, I'm happy to share that information with people. Mm -hmm. Like I get excited about it. Like I talk about everything like that's going on, like with the show and, you know, if somebody came up to me and were like, Hey, Sid, how do we like do a podcast? Like what you're doing? And I'm like, I'll be honest with them. I'll talk to them about things, but yeah, like for as long as you've been around, like, so like, that's, that's, it sounds like that's been your experience with people, which it's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, yeah, it, it, it stinks, but I mean, you know, there's, there's, there were people within, you know, that group that I was talking about that has told me, you know, many different helpful things, of course, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, again, everybody's journey is different. And I'm still trying to figure out how the hell to do things, you know, yeah. um, and uh, just sorry. I, I oh, no, go keep going. This is, your um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just hoping that uh, what I'm doing and what I'm going to do um will uh will latch on to hopefully somebody yeah exactly um compare yourself then like from before you met well to now Mm -hmm. after like having that experience your experience that you're having and continue to have with will like do you think you're a much better actor or performer than you like are you much better performer like from where you used to be before yeah. you met Will. You know what I mean? Like does that Yeah, I would say um I would say I'm more confident. Mm. I don't necessarily I I wouldn't necessarily say that I'd be I'm a better actor. Mm-hmm. Um maybe, I mean who knows. Um but I would say I'm more I'm more confident after after meeting Will. Um cuz also like after uh talking with him and and uh you know within that like little theater group within zoom um also like made me made me like apply for uh, um roles um online through uh casting websites like actors access and uh, backstage.com and things like that and uh thankfully i've i've gotten a couple you know small little projects within those websites but um at the same time, that's, you know, it's experience, it's resume building, it's, you know, challenging you as an actor. It's like, it's so much mm-hmm. more. And you get paid for it. So that's always yeah. the most important yeah. thing. <laughs> Not much, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me a Will story. Do you have a, like a, any cool stories about Will that you want to share? Um. I, I know Will 
uh, a decent amount. I do apologize. I've only, I've never met him physically. I've only really met him Zoom. Yeah. Wow. Like, um, dang. Where's he live? He lives, he lives, he lives like over an hour away from me right now. Okay. And then back when I first met him, I was all the way up in Sacramento mm-hmm. and he was, you know, back down in SoCal. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of which, now that I mean, you're reminding me, um, I, w- I, I wanted to thank him for helping me with my website and other things like that. And I, uh, I need to like buy him like a drink or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, personal meeting very, very soon. But yeah, I don't, I don't really have, uh, have any stories to tell about it. No, well, this is like an I interesting apologize. story. And no, no, like this is an interesting story too. Like, you know, I'm all about the online friendships coming from Saudi Arabia. I, I have a group of friends that I continue to like talk to mm-hmm. like um, for over 20 years. And some of them I haven't even met still. Um, Diego Ruby and Jaden Richardson, like those are, mm-hmm. well, Diego Ruby, she's an old friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and her partner Jaden, but like they made the music for the rewind, which, uh, you know, like they're an amazing group of people and I've never met them once. So like that it's really interesting, like that you have this like deep connection with somebody that you haven't met. Like I, I commend that. Like, I don't see that often, you know, like online friendships, like, I, I don't know, not to be like an old man. <laughs> I feel like back in the day, it was so easy to like make online friends. Maybe it was because like I was on the internet all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, let's see then, like, what was I going to say? Like, I was going to ask you like a question about Will now that you like brought up, like, how does that, like, how does that make you feel? Like this person that you have never met before is helping you out. Like, it, like, what's your reaction to that? Like, does it feel weird? Like, is it like normal? Like, I, I don't know. I guess like, I've never met anybody else who's like, oh yeah, like I, I've met this guy online and this mm-hmm. is, he's, hel- he's helping me out and he helped yeah. me out a lot. I mean, I mean, it, it's pretty wild because like, you know, when he was helping me with my website and all that stuff, like we, like he helped me with my website, like in a matter of days that I first met him. Um, and so like, he was so willing enough to like, you know, help me do that and then kind of help get the ball rolling, so to speak with my acting career. And I mean, I could probably thank him for all the roles that I've gotten, you know, yeah. through, uh, these casting websites and everything because of that reason mm-hmm. um and uh so i mean the, the the main word which is it's kind of funny is is thankful yeah um <laughs> it's like full there circle go. there we go, go uh, but show. yeah you know thankful because like he's a busy guy and like he you know acts on the side and like all this stuff like that and he took the time to help a, a total nobody actor mm-hmm. um with his resume and and web- website and everything to kind of just get yeah everything going out of curiosity, um, and again, maybe you don't have the answer, but maybe you can like just make an assumption. Like, why mm. do you think he did that for you? Uh, I think he just generally wants me to succeed, like like a a small um, actor. Um, you know, he it, it kind of like gives me like a little bit of faith in in humanity. You know, I wish kind of everybody wants that. You know, like I want this person is to succeed genuinely for no particular reason. I just want them to be happy and succeed. Um, and I think that's, that's why, um, you know, also he's getting, uh, older and I, I don't think he's going to be working any, you know, uh, in the years to come, I believe he's going to retire here in a little bit, not that long. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, maybe it's like patch, pa- pa- patching, passing on the torch, mm-hmm. um, so to speak, uh, of like, you know, okay, like I did all this stuff, you know, and I'm going to retire. So, you know, let's have this young kid, you know, continue yeah. on. Oh yeah, so. exactly. It's, um, I, I can't assume like if Will has kids or not, but like, mm-hmm. um, as somebody who, you know, is queer and, um, like, you know, adopting and stuff like that, but like, mm-hmm. right now it's just kind of like that, those steps are pretty like far away right now. I have to take care of myself <laughs> before yeah. I even think about taking care of a child. But yeah, exactly. um, so I pass on like what I learned, like I've mentored a few kids, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. um, mostly I'm interested in like the, like the 17, 16 year olds, you know, going into college, you know, like mm-hmm. the young adults, what do, you, what do you call it? What are those, what, what's that genre of movie? I can't remember what it's called. Like coming of age coming of okay age. Yeah, yeah yeah like you know they're coming they're going through their coming of age and i like being a part of that because like 
um, that's the opportunity. Like that's the moment when they're learning about themselves the most, you know, like mm. they're learning about the world. They're learning about um, like the good stuff in the world. They're also learning a lot They're They have a lot more information about the bad stuff in the world. Mm. Um, and like being a part of that as somebody who's grown up in a lot of like bad stuff, like I, um, and we talk about it on the show. I'm very like if I if I were to talk about all my bad stuff, like all my baggage and stuff, we'll be here all night. So yeah. <laughs> like, go listen to the podcast. Um, yeah. So like, I, I don't want people to be in that the same situations that I've been. You know, like mm-hmm. I can't imagine like withholding information or withholding like the the, th- the way that things have helped me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that. It just feels it feels selfish and it feels very. Yeah. Um, it feels, what's the word? Uh, hypocritical, you know, mm. <laughs> like, you know, you, you didn't get the help you wanted from other people. And now you're doing that to like this younger generation that's looking up to you. I was like, man, that's whack. That's whack. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you, you can't do that to yeah. especially the kids. You can't do that to the kids. Um, but no, it sounds like that's like, again, I can't assume if Will has kids or not, but like, it sounds like um, he found, he, he sees something in you and, you know, like your, um, involvement with Disney right now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know if it'll lead to anything, but you know, who knows, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, everything is, is hopefully, uh, we'll just, you know, be on the up and up. Everything will kind of continue to, to grow and, uh, expand. Yeah. And it sounds like it has, you know, like with his help and his touch, like with your mm-hmm. resume and stuff like that. Um, um, is there like when you meet him, like what's like kind of the ideal? Where do you want to like take him? Like, is there any cool restaurants or like, uh, like what's like the one place you, like you got to treat this guy who's like helping you out and changing your life? Like, where do you take him? Um, that's a good question. Cause like he's, so he's a chef. So, I mean, I'm assuming that he likes, 95 percent of food out there so i feel like i could take him to to any anywhere and he'd be he'd be thankful um McDonald's, i don't know if i mean you, you want to take him to mcdonald's it sounds like. hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> um you know i'm a huge fan of, of yard house i'm like a huge like yard house fan i love oh yard, yard house what, what's yard, yard, what's that good. it's like a big it's like a three-star restaurant maybe four-star restaurant um but it's like decent price and they have like everything it's like a typical like american restaurant but they're known for their drinks so they have like a huge selection of beer mm-hmm. i mean they have their own menu for beer and then oh. food okay. like it's insane um and uh you know pairing like whatever beer that you would like with like whatever food that you want um also like kind of helps as well um but like for him, I'm thinking about like, you know, like sushi or mm. something, something along those lines. Um, but uh, I mean, at the same time, like he's such a cool guy and he's such like a chill guy. Like yeah. I, I would be super down to just like go to Yard House and have a beer, have some nachos and just like hang out and talk for a while. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I'm not familiar with Yard House, but like the Yard House. So but that looks, that sounds dope. Like the, the, like the, beer menu and stuff like that it sounds like yeah. very similar to a restaurant here in spokane where oh, nice. they have like a they have like a giant fridge of like just different craft beers and stuff like that oh, it's kind cool. of it was kind of crazy i worked for them for a little bit as oh cool washer and you know like it didn't pay well the hours weren't great but boy yeah. the food rocked and the people yeah. were too i like i still like the owners so no hard feelings it was just like one of those things you know yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah but um like I, I guess the other question I want to ask about uh, Will, he's probably going to listen to this uh, episode. Like, do you think you'll share it with him? Like, um, how do you think he'll react to us talking about him? I think, to be honest, I think he's going to be surprised. Surprised? Why? Yeah, because, like, we don't, I mean, we we know each other, but we don't know each other, like, super, super well. But we know each other enough to be, like, not what's the word like like I mean I guess just like general friends you know um but uh you know we have like so much in common in terms of like acting and you know because he was once in my shoes and everything Mm -hmm. and uh yeah the 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 biggest word I think is 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 shocked because I don't think that he realizes like how much of an impact he's had on my entire entertainment career 
And so I think he'll be uh, tickled pink to uh, to hear all the all the good things I was saying about him. Yeah, three people who don't know each other well are praising each other. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> you know, like I think it's just just so funny. Like, cause yeah, the way you talk about him, like he, he definitely sounds like he means something so much to you because the mm-hmm. way you talked about him is like, I oh, I just thought you knew him for you know like ten years and like went to college together, like he was your professor. Or, something mm. like I had a I had a whole story and then you said you only known each other for two years and this is how you're talking about him mm. he must have been like important like so um this is like this has been a fun conversation so far that's for sure yeah. um what do you think is the one role like wh- what's one like role that you got like that you're like that made you happy I guess like or that made you like that was like a big win in your resume that you have to like credit will with like you don't have to go into detail or anything i'm just curious like is there like a role or question or something like um that you know you have to like contribute will's help like for you to getting this role um i think um i would have to say um I'm gonna I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say two roles, um, and I'm gonna say uh, I I did this short um, student film mm-hmm. right off the bat um, as soon as I submitted for something. Um, I was submitting like you know you, you could submit for like you know like fifteen project all at once if you want to, and one of them was a was a, uh, a student film. Um, I did that. That was a fun little role. Um, it was very very short, but I did it. Um, and the other other one would be um, I got these two voiceover projects, mm. um, just you know, just based off of uh, the producer looking at my resume, um, and I got uh, I got eighty bucks every single time I went in the studio. Look at and, that! Uh, did a voiceover gig for this uh, this producer because he saw my resume on one of the many casting websites I'm a part of. Yeah, and uh, he was like, okay, yeah, cool, I can I can take a chance on this guy. Nice. How many times you went in the studio out of curiosity? Uh, twice so far. Twice um, so far. I'm wow. hoping, I'm hoping because I've worked together with him um twice. And I, I you know, I mean he has my number and all that stuff and my email and everything. And um, you know, depending upon the project, and he he knows what my voice sounds like. Mm-hmm. And so if he ever needs me, I'm I'm assuming that he will give me a call. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was pretty that was pretty big, pretty yeah. cool. Exactly. No, that sounds amazing. And like, it was because of Will, like, you know, took a chance on you Mm. and to like pass on what, you know, fixing my resume. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. What's the one big thing that you learned from Will? Um, probably just like making everything that I have look professional and not like it was done by an amateur like myself. (laughs) <laughs> expand on that a little bit more yeah like, what, what do you mean like compare compare what you used to have to now yeah so like nothing in terms of like projects have changed I mean of course they changed once will help me with my resume and stuff like that so like I have more credits now on my resume but like before like no credits have changed but just in terms of like how my resume looks to the caching director because you know I mean it's just an atypical job search Mm-hmm. You know, you submit your resume and every resume has to has to get by the 30 second uh, resume view, you know, viewing of, you know, the caching director looking at the at the resume, right? Or the boss looking at the resume, you know, the recruiter looking at the resume. They got to pass that 30 second eye test, basically. Um, so he, he helped me with that. And then um, he helped me with uh, headshots. So, yeah, again, just looking more professional. Um and then my bio sounding more professional, mm. um, just basically taking, you know, so little of what I have and making it more than what people think, mm. if that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. So like, that's like the big thing. Yeah. Because like, yeah. uh, websites are definitely hard to do. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned before, like, yeah. uh, when I had my professional like theater website, it was, both a, th- a theater website and um, a portfolio and um, what was the other one? A historical like 
this is what Sid's been doing. And also like, this mm-hmm. is what the show was about and used to be able to like look at the posters and see who's in the cast and stuff like that. So it was also like a, a historical document as well. Of yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> like the show I was a part of, even if it was like a, a small role, like um, yeah. I would feature all this like stuff in there. Um, I was very proud of it, but now it's um, I expired that website and um, I have a, there's a website for this podcast where we will podcast.com, but um I didn't, <laughs> I didn't invest too much in it. So I have the, I, I own the domain. I just like okay. haven't, okay. haven't updated like the website. I don't own the domain for um, like my old theater website. So that was yeah. just like, that is no big deal. It's no big deal for me, but um, yeah. websites are hard and yeah, yeah it's, I'm I mean, glad even somebody- with, uh, with like, you know, the, these website creators, you know, mm-hmm. like I used, uh, I, or I use, I still use uh, Squarespace, but when I was first creating my, my website, like it took hours mm. to get everything perfect and I mean I'm still like I still I mean of course you know as as any actor should they should go back to the website go back to their resume every few weeks and just make sure that everything is good looking good tweaking stuff etc cetera, etc cetera, because you know you are you are your own brand like you are marketing yourself to mm. you know these people that want to hire you hopefully want to hire you yeah so yeah that's what will taught you too yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> your brand and everything. Yeah, exactly. That's- More mm-hmm. so than before. Like I learned that in school, but mm-hmm. like he like, like really like drilled it in me. Like, you know, like you have to like open your mind more and like, I don't know the exact word like of what I'm trying to say, but like um, just kind of like open my eyes to like, this is serious, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, that and also like in this free freelance world, like you are your own representation in a lot of things. So like mm-hmm. you, like uh, I, I think a lot of like these old institutions kind of like underestimate social media or like don't really know what to do with it. When they in do. reality, it's just like, yo, everybody's on here. <laughs> there's yeah. like TikTok, there's Twitter, Instagram. And yeah, sure. There's a lot of shitty stuff. But like, this is how, this is the new age of communication and like reaching yeah. out to people. Like that's, I've reached out to so many people on Twitter about so many things and yeah. like I've gotten guests on the show through Twitter and like my communications with them. So like you need to have a presence online mm. if you want to be in like acting because like that's what they're going to be looking for too, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's social media and just acting in general, or like the entertainment industry in general, it's so, or it's the job industry in general. It's so... It, it changed so much, you know, I mean, even in the last five years, the last 10 years to now, um, you know, depending upon the job, it could be easier to get a job. It could be harder to get a job. I think it's harder to get a job yeah. um, now because like social media and everything, there's just like so many things within social media and so many people on social media that are popular and, um, you know, things like that, that like, um, I don't know, just kind of make it harder for, uh, for you to get a job. I don't really know where I was going with that. I apologize. Oh, no. Um, yeah. But uh, like, hopefully you kind of see, like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time with words for some reason within that, that, uh, like, that oh, no, question. That's, that's just, that's just the sign that we're almost but done. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah basically what we're saying is like yeah you definitely need a social media presence you also like yeah I, I would also recommend anyone to like figure out all this editing stuff too and like mm. making like content on like youtube and stuff like that like brush up their acting skills brush up their like hosting skills but that's a whole other conversation so it seems like well uh um will's kind of like got in your brain that you have to have like this presence online um also make a uh, make a Finsta account, like make a secondary account where you can like <laughs> vent things. Cause like the other thing I realized like, oh shoot, now that more people are getting eyes on my account, I can't like talk about like, I don't know, <laughs> like depressing stuff. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> not that I can be positive all the time on like my main social right. media, but like, you know, uh, maybe uh, like maybe people don't need to know about my love life on my, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or stuff like that. Yeah. But, that's that's kind of where I was going with with my with my uh you know what I was saying with like social media and everything like social media is so like it's it's so fake in a way of 
you know, there's so many creators on there that like want you to believe that they're having a fun time, but in reality, they're not. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's kind of sad to be honest. Um, you know, but at the same time, like within, you know, the job community, the acting community, entertainment industry, like, you know, you have to have this presence online. You have to. Mm-hmm. And, and if you don't, um, you're not going to get hired. Like yeah. well, a lot of times, like it's not just about your resume sometimes. It's, it's, about everything that Your you presence. have ever done exactly mm-hmm. yeah. yeah well i will let you know though because like, like i do agree with what you're saying about you know like all social media posts like mo- for the most part being fake uh whenever i post about disneyland and i look like i'm having fun i'm absolutely having fun and you should be jealous <laughs> <laughs> of know? course yeah um i did uh like i, I do have one more question about will but i, I kind of want to go off this yeah. one second um like i I told Annalise that Universal Studios, I think, was way better than Disneyland, actually. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know you don't agree either. When they only have eight attractions. You know, like, first when, of all. like when you have that express <laughs> lane and you are zooming, zooming through the lines and you finish the entire park <laughs> in one day. Enjoy that $90 yes however much it is for yeah. for eight attraction that's so much money for it it's such a rip well, off disneyland tickets are like well for one day at least an out-of-towner like uh added up it's about 130 dollars <laughs> like you you probably you you southern californian people get all the cheap stuff <laughs> yeah which i i don't understand like why only socal residents get a discount well i think on, it's because you're closer you know like, tickets yeah but like it should be like at least the entire like california yeah you know, in, in, in my opinion at least yeah but, well i digress um we're getting, yeah we are getting towards the end of the show here um you know you talk about eventually meeting will here in the future mm-hmm. and like that when that happens that's going to be probably a really good conversation like that's going to be a really good time to hang out um pretend like that's um that pretend that's happening right now and you're talking to will right now um what is one thing you want what, what what's one thing you want to tell will um like you know question. yeah like what's yeah. the one thing that's like in your heart or like um that you really want to say to him i mean like total like obvious thank you for what you've done for me like even though it was like so small like it made it such a huge impact on you know my i mean not only my like entertainment career but like just my entire like outlook on the industry itself um and just again, just kind of opening my eyes, opening my mind to, uh, you know, being creative and create whatever, whenever you can. Um, And just get out there because you won't know until you try. Yeah, that's dope. Um, I'm excited. Like, hopefully you post pictures of him, like when you guys meet, like, oh, for, I mean, for, for sure. Is there like a, a date, like for when this is happening? No, uh, not not yet. But I mean, I'm I'm assuming. I mean, I'm I'm pretty busy um, until April, so it <laughs> won't happen until that's fair. until at least the spring. Sadly, yeah. Well, so. that's that's totally fair. But when it happens, it's gonna be epic, and I, oh, I'm for excited. Sure. Like, because when I when I met my mentors, like one of them, uh, Yusuf Al Gundi, um, playwright, um, Egyptian American playwright. He, mm. uh, I loved his work back at the throw. Um, like he also did. Uh, the people of the book like he, he does mm-hmm. a, like uh, pilgrims yusuf and uh yusuf and sherry sorry yusuf if you're like <laughs> musa and sherry musa and sherry yeah <laughs> okay sorry yusuf if i screw that up but um we used yeah. to like you know kind of like you guys like we we're pen pals online and uh mm-hmm. like i met him one day in real life like during actf the, the actf that i met on elisa actually oh cool. um, and um we met in person ever since we've met like back and forth mm-hmm. um in person uh i saw the world premiere of his show like at the um the act theater in seattle like that was really cool um and he got to be on the show too I'm, I'm gonna bring him back i i miss talking to him uh he's a really cool guy and i don't get a lot of arabs on this show <laughs> i'm the yeah. only one so talking in arabic with him is always fun that's um, awesome so uh christian thank you so much for talking about wells thank you for sharing well with us yeah thank you for having me i appreciate yeah, it absolutely where would i anytime yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Wayward Artist, uh, this is the, the rewind. We are, we are in the lightning round questions of the show. It's a series of five questions I like to ask us each and every week. They're fun. They're not so quick because we'll talk about them forever. Uh, Christian, are you ready? I, I think so. Question number one. Um, 
Oh, wow. Wait. Uh, what happened? Oh, my God. I can't remember what they are. Oh, shit. Uh, tell me. Question number one. Oh, no, no, that, that what would be your per- Yeah, question number one. Yeah, question number one. Sorry, I've not okay. interviewed a new person in a while. You didn't you didn't write them down? <laughs> I, I have I've had them memorized. We're a hundred episodes in. I've had it memorized. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, now they're coming back. Um, question number one. What would be your perfect day? That's the first one. Ooh, that's a good oh, that's a good question. Oh yeah. my god. Um Ooh, okay. Perfect day. Um, all right. Uh, in the morning, uh, pancakes, bacon, eggs, the whole shebang, uh, a delicious cup of black coffee, mm-hmm. um, or a white mocha from Starbucks. I love white mochas from Starbucks so much. Ooh, nice. Um, and I mean, my, my perfect day, I mean, it, it can range, but right now, my perfect day is that breakfast and me watching uh, so many movies in a day on top of playing whatever video games I want mm-hmm. and uh, taking a nap within the middle of the day and just kind of just vegging out, mm-hmm. lounging out and basically doing nothing all day. That is a perfect day for me. <laughs> no, uh, no Disneyland, huh? Like just no, I mean, I was going to say like perfect day can also be me going to Disneyland, which mm-hmm. always makes me happy. Um, I went to Disneyland. Um, I mean, I go to Disneyland for many different reasons, not just like to have fun, but like I go to Disneyland like legit, like this is going to sound crazy, maybe not, but like whenever I'm like having a hard time, you know, whenever I walk underneath that bridge, everything is off my shoulders until I leave Disneyland. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah. for sure, that could be a perfect day as well. Definitely. Go, going into that too like I, I definitely felt it too like um on my last trip I um I was doing people watching and I just realized like with all the sound and the smell and like the people mm-hmm. there like it definitely you know Disney's got that um you know like the real world doesn't exist like type vibes in there so I love that like it's, it's so nice I don't know how they do <laughs> it but like I for a second Car payment I, bills essays to write mm-hmm. job hunting uh you know uh, they don't <laughs> exist everything yeah it's just all the, gone it's just all the twenty dollar it, it's just the twenty dollar soda that i buy like that's it like I don't, <laughs> I don't even care about how much it costs like yeah it, yeah like, no. I, like i don't know if you treat know, yourself like you probably know that yeah yeah the blue milk yeah. thing. the best of the blue milk container yeah i um I, I was talking to annalise about it but like i was so excited that this thing light up like i didn't realize it did until like i was packing up and i was like there's a switch at the bottom <laughs> and I turn the switch like this thing lights up. Holy shit. Like that's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I also forgot it, it lit up. Yeah. I mean, like I, it saved my life because like I, it was a hot Californian day and I was dying of like, uh, just dying of heat and thirst. So I bought the blue milk. I uh, like drank it all. And I had a cast member fill it up with water for me. And I was like, this is, uh, this is literally saving my life right now. Nice. Make sure you have a water bottle when you're at Disneyland. Yes. And sunscreen. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm one of those people like, you know, I'm Arab. Like I, I don't get sunburned, you know, because I've lived in the <sighs> desert. I've never gotten Must sunburned. be nice. <laughs> but like, you know, I did get sunburned actually. Like oh, that, really? oh. that theory, that theory was not, not at Disneyland, but like oh, okay. at, in my mom's convertible, like at the time, like she, oh. I, I was riding in it with the sun down. I wasn't riding. I don't drive, but she was. And um, I was wearing a uh, tank top and mm. I look at my back. I'm like, oh shoot, there's like an imprint for where the seatbelt was on my, the back of my shoulder, like, or like, I don't know. It was like some kind of imprint. I, I don't remember, but I remember it was a sunburn and it hurt. <laughs> it was crazy. I was like, wow, I must not be Arab anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> the magic is gone. You know, you're changing. Yeah. The, the, uh, the miracle is gone. Yeah. It's like in going back to Encanto. I was say Encanto, like full circle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question number two, um, What's a song that describes your life right now? Oh, that's a good question. God, because I listen to yeah. so much music. Yeah. Not, um, to, not to interrupt you, but the, the questions are coming back now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the miracles, the miracles are coming back. <laughs> um I would say. Um <laughs> so 
This is my favorite song of all time, and I always go back to it. But this is actually this is pretty funny. So I love uh, I love indie music a lot. There's a bunch of indie bands I love, and one of them, uh, the band is called From Indian Lakes, and they're from Yosemite, California. Oh, nice. um, fantastic band. Look them up if you if you would like to. If you love indie music, they're very groovy. Anyway, what are they, what are they called? From Indian Lakes. From the band's called From Indian Lakes. Yeah. Oh wow. Um amazing band. They have this song called Am I Alive? Um, and the song is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the lyrics really like, I don't know, like they uh they they hit home. Um but uh, yeah, that would be the song that like describes me, right? Was your was your question? Uh, yep. The the li- well the the song that describes your life right now. Like, how's your life right now? And like, does that song? What song would fit like the, the yeah. life that you're living right now? So, am, is- am I alive? Yeah, exactly. Am, yeah, I, you know, there's a lot going on in my life, you know, besides work and all that stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like I'm trying to like you know kind of organize everything together because I'm getting like busier and busier by the second with um work and acting on the side and like projects and like another job opportunity and like all this other stuff that's like coming together which is awesome um but it's uh it's very um hectic and crazy and chaotic and um uh that song I kind of always go back to no matter what because like you know am I alive like am I Am I am I good? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. the, the way we'd artists out there can listen to from uh like from Indian Lakes, uh Am I Alive in the playlist that I have accumulated called Wayward Songs for Wayward Artists, where it's accumulation of everyone's songs that describes their lives right now. That's um cool. it'll be updated soon. <laughs> we have a huge social media push for the channel. So nice. that's gonna be the one thing. And I have not uploaded that since I don't know, like probably before even before like the rebrand because like right now the rewind and where we will podcast and all the other shows that we do on this channel um they didn't exist like until may um let's see okay there's a bunch of fireworks going off okay sorry um just going to a conversation with my mom uh for the people out there my mom texted me she was asking like hey are you like throwing stuff around i'm like no i'm recording a podcast and I, i guess people are lighting fireworks in um on february 4th when this is being recorded so that happens to me all the time in long beach so i have no idea I mean, why they like fireworks but i mean you work at disneyland so it i'm glad it's not just here <laughs> um so, so uh that will be updated uh, that will be updated soon i've been very bad about that so uh yeah i was just talking about the rebrand so you just get a little uh context about this channel um it yeah. used to be called wayward artists in the wayward world and there was only one show and it was called wayward artists in the wayward world. <laughs> um, but anyway, question number three, what is your third favorite movie? My third favorite movie, like specifically, mm-hmm. not, not first favorite movie, third, number favorite, third. favorite movie. Number okay. Favorite one. Yeah. The one, that um, the one that you don't talk about. Ooh, that's a good question. I would say, um my third favorite movie i would say would have to be the matrix the very first one oh. i love the matrix it's one of the many movies that i could watch whenever whenever and never get tired of it mm-hmm. um yeah third favorite, favorite favorite movie is that like that's in my top five yeah what about the other matrixes like are they are you uh do you love all of them i liked the second one um Personally, I know it, like it's super slow at first, and then it kind of like finally picks up at the at the end when they meet the Frenchman. Um, and then the third one was I thought it was good, but it got weird. Um, you know, with like the Smith being like a program, but like also a real person, kind of not really. I don't know. It was a little confusing. Like, wait, he's a program? No, he's not. He's a human, but he's also kind of a program. Uh, okay whatever matrix (laughs) Um, and then um like the implication of neo dying um sorry spoiler alert even though the movie's been out for like you know 50 years now Mm -hmm. um but like i don't know like in my opinion like i think like he like if he did die in matrix 3 i think it would be more than possible for him to come back did you forget matrix 4 
Um, I haven't seen Matrix Four yet, but I know I know that he does come back. I just haven't seen it yet. I'm actually in the middle of watching rewatching all the Matrix movies right now. I just like, I just watched the second one like two days ago. Okay, so you're trying to like uh, refresh before you see. Them yeah, before. so I'm watching the third one. Um, I mean, probably within the week, and then I'll watch. I'll finally watch the fourth one. So all I know is that Matrix, that Matrix, that Neo is back. You know, and that's yeah. all I know. Well, yeah, like uh, I haven't seen, uh, like I've only seen Matrix one. So, uh, like the fourth one. I mean, you could be right. Like he could be dead. He could still be dead. He could still be alive. Like who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, he's not because he's yeah. Neo. And then speaking about the Matrix, have you played the Unreal Engine demo for the Matrix? Oh, oh yeah, have I crazy. played, dude. It was so good. It's crazy. I I I loved it. I I'm scared. I absolutely like, loved it. It made for, me scared for for PS2. Oh no! Um, so there is. <laughs> I, I don't know like if it's on like I'm sure it's on PC or whatever. There is a demo. Oh, of the, I know what you're talking about. I'm sorry, Jacksepticeye that's it. played it, right? Yeah, it's uh, the Unreal Engine Five yeah. demo of their it brand was like new. Ten minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, Unreal Five's engine uh, test demo featuring like the Matrix and the, they were like showcasing like what this new engine can do and the ray tracing the graphics like the facial animations like the world the colors and everything it's yeah. just like it was like watching a cgi movie like a good a very good yeah. cgi movie like animated movie and it when was like, i uh when i saw the uh the um you know dive subject i play and i was like wait what mm-hmm. that's insane but yeah no uh, uh continue oh no i was just gonna say like that is the future of games right there. And I'm just like, that is so crazy that we're going to get on that level where we can even distinguish if like, <laughs> it, are, are these real people or, mm-hmm. or is this fake? Like, this is so That's crazy. what, like, one of the reasons why I love video games so much, it's like, and, then my, and my mom even, you know, it's like, whenever she watched me play a game, like, it's like watching a movie, you know, like mm-hmm. they're making video games like so cool and so uh, just real. Yeah. Now. Um, but I played, so they made a game of yeah, Matrix. They did all three movies into one game they for did. the PS2 once upon a time. Um, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. Um I played, I played that as a kid. Really, too. really good. I loved it. Yeah. You play you played PS2, so that kind of puts you around my age, I'm assuming, like 26, I'm assuming. I'm 20. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm uh, 28, like going on 29. So I like, am also 28, going on 29. Okay, yeah, there we When's go. When's your birthday? Um, May 14. No way. Yeah, for real. My birthday is May 7th. Oh, look at that. That's at that. crazy. Well, I'm well, a week older than you. Well, yeah. A week. Um, like I'm. I was born in nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah you're born 93, right? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. A, All right. I guess you are older than me. Shit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> by, by one week. <laughs> but here's here's the other crazy thing. Do you know who yeah. else was born on May 14? No. Uh, two of some of the most influential people in my life, anyway. Uh, Miranda Cosgrove, who was born on May 14, 1993. Okay. <laughs> and George Lucas. Ah. Uh- I was like, I just lucked out. I'm okay. Like, and you said you said Miranda Cosgrove. Yeah, Miranda Cosgrove. That's awesome. Like she's, <laughs> she's literally my twin. I, I'm I'm That's curious. So funny. Like I want to meet her one day and ask her, like, hey, what time were you born? Were you born at 11 30 p.m.? Like, because like we yeah. would literally be twins. Um, but no, that's um George Lucas. Like the, I'm ne- like the biggest Star Star Wars fanboy, and yeah. I got the creator's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's no nah, that's it's always so it's cool. meant to be yeah it's meant to be i always i always wish george lucas a happy birthday like just on oh. facebook and stuff like happy birthday uncle george <laughs> <laughs> you know that is um, so sweet yeah um question number four what's your favorite ice cream topping Ooh, uh, or, or uh, gelato or frozen yogurt has to be cookie dough cookie dough so i love cookie dough so is it like the little balls like the little cookie dough balls nice what do you eat that's what kind of ice cream are you eating with um i mean i'm a huge chocolate lover so like it has to be chocolate nice but um my like go-to ben and jerry's is half baked which is like you know it's 
chocolate and vanilla ice cream and cookie dough nice. and brownie bite. So it's like everything that I love in one little pint. It's amazing. Nice. I love yeah. that. I, I love a chocolate everything too. So um, a lot of people don't, which, you know, they they just don't like to have fun. They, exactly. They don't like to <laughs> live life on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question number five, most important question on the show. Uh, speaking of chocolate, uh, pick a side, left Twix or right Twix. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the question. Buddy. I love it. Okay. Left Twix or right Twix. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm ambidextrous, but I, I lean toward my left hand. So I'm going to say left Twix. Yeah. You're a mutant. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> I'm, I, I think it's like 3% of the population, maybe more. I don't know. I could be talking out of my ass probably, but not a whole lot of people are, are, are ambidextrous, but I lean more toward my, my left hand, nice. which is kind of funny. Left Twix. Uh, why'd you, like, is it because of that? Like, because you lean more towards your left hand. So yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's how, that's how people usually answer it. Like uh, we've gotten a couple of, Got a couple of uh, creative answers in the mm-hmm. past, rest assured. And uh, one big argument, actually, about the <laughs> Really? <laughs> like, uh, like on a group thing, like um, a, fr- a good friend of mine, Aaron Sellers, um, amazing person, amazing actress in the area, and like creator. Um, I asked her that question because um, like I asked her it before and it caught her off guard. But then I asked her again, like on this like promotional thing that they were doing. And she's like, uh, Sid, I hate that question. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then like uh, one of the other ac- actors like chimed in and he was like super in it into it and they kind of like they it was a it was a friendly jest like it wasn't like when yeah. i say fight i don't i don't mean like you know they were right yeah, yeah. it was like a, yeah of course it, it was just like a lot of arguing for just like a, a simple <laughs> candy yeah. bar it was, i don't know it's, it's a fun question i love it yeah that's that's hilarious even though that like you know the i i love that inside joke of like which is better left twix or right twix mm-hmm. you know like that like always cracks me up yeah and uh you know like it's not an inside joke here everyone's everyone <laughs> everyone got asked that question so yeah uh, if they asked me why like i picked that question i would tell them I don't know. It sounded funny. <laughs> like there's no real reason. Like I made this podcast, like uh, the original show, I made it on a whim, like just with only, and it was only audio. So I didn't yeah. even know we would be getting to where we are today. So, Hey, there we are. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, Wayward Artists, this has been the Rewind part of the Wayward World podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and uh, podcast services everywhere. Support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Wayward World podcast. Uh, please share it with everybody. Get us subscribed and rate five stars on your favorite uh, podcast service. Now, Christian, send us off with the last word and where can people find you? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, at- two things. Oh, oh. Oh, you got, you, got, you got two assignments here. Okay. Plug your stuff and send us off. Okay. All right. Uh, notchristiant.com, mm-hmm. at notchristiant on Instagram and Twitter. Um, uh, Facebook at not Christian T official, mm-hmm. um, on Facebook. And, uh, if you would like to see me stream dead by daylight and other games on the Twitch, um, it is twitch.tv slash I'm your ghost host, <laughs> uh, which is also nice. my PSN gamer tag. If you would like to have me there too, nice. uh, you know, if you would like to, uh, and, uh, the last, the last word. Yeah. Last word. Last word. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, so much for listening. Sid, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic day, night, wherever you are. Uh, be good people, make good choices, and use your blinker. Yeah. What's the <laughs> Disney? What's the Disneyland goodbye? Like, have a magical day. Like. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, have a magical day. Wow, no, that was terrible. That was a terrible yeah. Mickey Mouse impression, but yeah, that's fine. Like when, when I get up, before I get off the phone, that's no. usually what a cast member tells me. Like, have a magical day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's like that's like the shtick. But yes, uh, okay. there we have go. a magical day and use your blinker. More importantly, stop there cutting people off on the freeway. All right. Well, we're <laughs> artists. Without further ado, it's been real. <laughs>